Welcome to season four. And well, we thought this episode was gonna be a sit down interview with Duke. But it was live interview. It went from like sit down to live. Like Explore this live Q and A was awesome. Both of them, they were so exciting. Well, talking about both two, like twin, two, like double, like okay. <laughs> There was too much content, so we had to make two episodes. And, and well, enjoy Never Enough Toke. Ever from Saint Johns John. and Moose Jaw. We were all. So we're here in Moose Jaw. Well, downtown Moose Jaw. And we're about to go inside to interview too. So let's go. Yeah. Today we're here with Canadian Supergroup 2. Wow, this is so professional. Yeah, it's professional because we've done it like 2,000 times. <laughs> I love these guys. Okay. So basically comic book origin story like 30 seconds explaining how you guys got together. Did you just say comic book origin story? Yeah, Give it up, bro. Yeah, man. Right there, right there. That's very, very 2000. He's talking my language. He said the comic book origin of this band. Well, it was a nuclear flood of gamma rays. And uh, <laughs> no, uh, we, uh, he's asking for the origin of the band, basically. So uh, I've known Corey since he was 14 years old. Am I correct on that? I always I yes. tell that story, and I'm not sure if I'm lying. 13, 14, yeah. 13, 14 years old. I was 63. So do the math. No. So we were kids around Saskatchewan. We used to play in bands, and he was playing in a country band. With my dad? With his dad, with Roman, who you just saw. And, uh, and I was playing in the rock bar in the very same building. They had a rock bar and a country bar, so we crossed paths there. And oil and water did not get along. Just kidding. Now, we liked each other, and we, 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 we always kind of stayed in touch. And then all these years later, um, you know, he's playing with those people, and then I'm playing with those people. And then we, we, I had met Shane back, back then. We knew Brent back then. Oh, in the in the late '80s and early '90s, there was a great cover scene in this country where you could go off and play songs and whatnot. So then the idea of like playing charity shows in Canada and playing all Canadian music came up, and then next thing we knew, we uh, decided to record them. Remember? Being in the United States, we live there now, Las Vegas yeah. and Los Angeles. We don't hear the ca Canadian music anymore as much. You hear no. Brad Adams, you hear Celine Dion. But you don't hear all the stuff that we play today. No. And so we missed those songs. And we'd always get together and go, hey, man, whatever happened to, you know, remember that song? What kind of love Weeks is this? Kids and Street Heart yeah. and Harlequin, all those things that we loved, yeah. And so, and, and there, there's a saying that there's nobody more Canadian than a Canadian living abroad. I mean, we would just always reminisce about all these things. Uh, and so we just, would, we decided one day that we would record our favorite songs that helped us cut our teeth and yeah. become the band and the musicians that we are today. Totally. What is it like being back at John's, Corey? What's it like being back at John's? It's always fantastic. See all the same faces, and it's still the same owners, and and see all the you know it's, you know when you come in, it smells exactly like you remember as a kid. That's it's, funny. Right? Yeah, it's John's music. I you could blindfold me. Oh, John's music. <laughs> so you know, and like I said, I mean, I grew up here in Moose Jaw. This was my music store. There was no Amazon. There was no Sweetwater. This is where I got all my, my instruments. Yeah, totally. And you have to support these kind of stores, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, because these uh, you know, independently owned companies are uh, the most important places. And like you say, when they spring up guys like Corey Churko who go on to have a musical career, you can thank places like John's Music yeah. for that. What Canadian song will you not touch? What Canadian song will we not touch? Um, well, the other night I mentioned Meet Sue, uh, Bye Bye Mo Cowboy. I don't know if anyone remembers that song. <laughs> we, but I, to be honest, I would touch that song. I would do. That's how crazy I am. I don't think there's really a song we wouldn't necessarily not touch. I think I won't, We won't say the name of the band, but we actually did record uh, another song for this new record, and the band wouldn't let us include. release it. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> da, 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 da. What instrument do you wish you could play? Oh. You know, I wish I could play one of those crazy like harmonicas like Stevie Wonder plays. 
you know, it's like the chromatic harmonica. It sounds super crazy challenging. Yeah. When he plays it, it's like really crazy. But uh, I'm fascinated by that. What is it? Lap steel. Oh, the lap steel. That's another one. The, 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 oh, yeah. the lap steel is not... Steel guitar. The, la the steel guitar is not as bad, uh, not as crazy as the pedal steel guitar sounds. That's what that is. Is that a pedal steel back there? Okay, that's... that's a pedal steel. I can't see. I don't have eyes at the back of my head. Yeah, and it's like I did, flying I got a too much hair on it. Like flying a helicopter. Oh, right, 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 yeah. No, that's a whole other thing. I yeah. wish I could play that. That's a, yeah. that's a good one. Yeah. There you go. Fiddle's pretty hard, and you play it really well, but yeah. that's... Fiddle's very hard. I'm still learning. That's a challenge. <laughs> what is it like to hear from people who actually wrote the song? Um, Hot Child in the City uh, by Nick Gilder. He posted a thing like yesterday going, check out this cool version of my song. And I was like, wow, Nick Gilder did that, you know, so... Bill Henderson also, for My Girl, when we when yeah. he heard that, he was like, yeah, this is cool. Yeah, we've had like a lot of the people who... You know whose songs we did versions of. Uh, they seem to really dig it. Yeah. <laughs> Why is the only '90s song ironic? Oh, well. I'm sorry. What's the question? Why, Why is the only '90s song? song? Only '90s song? I don't know. I, I think because we grew up on we grew up on all the songs that uh, like a lot of the songs we recorded were the ones that we grew up on. And we really loved them, and we kind of went there. And at some point, I think somebody decide uh, discussed the idea of doing something. I don't even know how that happened. I think it was just kind of one of those things where it was like. It'd be really funny to do an Alanis Morissette song, and that's kind of how it happened. It's not that funny, actually. That's just pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. I think a lot of it came from we were doing songs with some, like the the Don't It Make You Feel song with female vocals. Right. Yeah, yeah. They like to punish me making me sing girls' songs. We were always saying how great you sang vocals from songs of you know yeah. with women singers, and mm -hmm. and we were like then this ironic <laughs> song, which is just a great song. Yeah. I'd like to hear those songs sung by a giant witch. I think it'd be great. <laughs> is it true Chris Jericho was almost in the band? Chris Jericho is certainly an early part of, of playing Canadian music. We always, uh, he's Canadian, Chris from Winnipeg, and we uh, would always jam Canadian songs together and whatnot. So, so him and Fitz actually used to play a thing called Cover Boy, which was a play on Lover Boy and cover songs, doing Canadian songs. And then we just sort of... You know, this version is totally something different, but uh, yeah, no, Chris is uh, sort of, you know, in a lot of ways, an alumni in many ways. What's your favorite crowd size? Crowd size? This one. I like this crowd. Yeah. It's a good looking crowd. They smell good. Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're from Saskatchewan, like me. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I mean, we everybody on this stage has played, like, Shane plays at the Tokyo Dome in Tokyo. Tokyo, Manitoba, it's a different town. No, <laughs> Tokyo, Japan. Multiple nights at Tokyo Dome. And that's, how, how many people are in that place? At least 65,000. 65,000 people. So multiple nights they'll play there. And that just, that's got to be bizarre to like, you know, play that kind of size of place. And we've all played, you know, Corey with Shania and us with Slash and all that kind of stuff. We played massive crowds and it's amazing. And then we played intimate crowds. Like the other night we played like this in a small club and it was it was a lot of fun. In a lot of ways, I have to say I prefer smaller, more intimate things, yeah. just because yeah. that way you're interacting, you can kind of hear when people are like, you suck, you know, okay, <laughs> that kind of thing, and, you know, you, luckily we're past that phase, but, uh, you know, but yeah, I really enjoy that, that side of it, personally. There is an interaction with the audience, mm -hmm. and if they're too far back where you can't see them, it just becomes wallpaper. Yeah, a lot of so festivals. So you end up playing to the first five rows anyway, no mm -hmm. matter how big the gig is. What was the inspiration for Never Enough? That's a good question. Um, well, it's, I mean, uh, as musicians, I think, I, I keep saying, like, you know, musicians, when they get together on a, uh, as often as we do, eventually, you know, ideas start to kind of sprout, and we sort of just find ourselves going, coming up with something, and then, uh, you know, and and that next thing you know, you've got a song, and, you, you, and it's it sounded so good when we kind of actually started to put it together that it was like, we have to record this, you know, and figure out what to do with it. And, and most importantly, we wanted us, uh, our first original song to be able to be played next to all these old 70s and 80s songs without seeming out of place. Yeah. So we tried to fashion it with the big hook, the four on the floor drums, and you know the synth with the rock and guitars. Yeah. Yeah, it's like and the harmonies. All, and a lot of harmonies. And, yeah, harmonies, vocals, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, all our favorite bands were like, that was the blueprint for a lot of <clears throat> prairie bands, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, had keyboards as a support instrument, not just, you know, guitars but lots of like like street art's a great example keyboards very important part of the the makeup of the songs and everybody's singing great and and so 
Are any of you planning to move to a moose shop? <laughs> <laughs> well, I just said I was looking for a couch to crash on, so you never know what might happen. <laughs> Moved in as of last night. Yeah, we moved in as of last night. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> We're gonna stay at the Churco. We're actually exactly. staying at my dad's house tonight. So. Yeah, yeah. Why did you decide to do in stores? In stores? Because of this. This is awesome. We get to play and hang out with people and talk and to you guys. Uh, yeah, and talk to you guys mostly. Yeah, and. Uh, Again, try to find a couch to crash on tonight. That's basically that was the brunt of all this. But yeah. Well, we're not doing all, a whole bunch of in stores. We're just we're doing the ones two, that yeah. sort of me meant a lot. Obviously, because of this is where I grew up. Th these are our roots. We wanted to revisit our roots. How do you chew gum and sing at the same time? <laughs> How do we chew gum and sing at the same time? It's actually a very good question. It's so funny because I I've done I used to do music videos. Uh, we would make music videos, and they'd be like, "You can't chew gum while you're shooting the video because it looks like you're going, you know." Like you're singing when you're not singing, and then when you're singing, it looks crazy. And I was like, "What are you talking about? This is what I do on stage." And they're like, "Well, but it looks like really silly." And I'm like, "Okay, so I wouldn't just wouldn't chew gum." I don't know. I just honestly started chewing gum on stage uh, as just kind of like a what I do. And I, actually, you know, Dave Grohl talks about it too. I, I saw a thing where he was talking about. It. I go, "Oh, that's weird that he chews gum too." Kind of like he talks about how it kind of lubricates his throat. I was like, "I never really thought about that. I just chew a lot it's of gum." True, yeah, it keeps the saliva glands working and then and lubricates your throat. Yeah. If you could, if you could partner with anyone else to make a song, who would you partner with? Boy, well, that's a good question. Anybody? Anybody? Probably '80s Lonnie Anderson. Sorry. <laughs> Everybody, go Google that immediately. Where did that come from? I just immediately thought partner with. <laughs> I'd love to be living like a, a life, you know, with someone as wonderful as Lonnie Anderson was in the '80s. What's so bad about that? I was thinking more of a. Like if we partnered with somebody in, oh, like in a, our Canadian circles, like, oh, yeah, that would yeah. be pretty cool. Yeah. Maybe have Getty Lee. Getty Lee, that'd be cool, yeah. Sing on something with us. Totally, that'd be awesome. Bill Henderson from Chili Whack. <laughs> Chili Whack, exactly. Anything else? Anything else. Do you have Lonnie Anderson's email address? Just kidding. <laughs> Is Lonnie still alive? I feel terrible. Uh, yeah, she's still around. Okay, good. Sorry. <laughs> 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 Corey could text her, yeah. Hey, we talk all the time. We talk all the time. Yeah, of course. Um, Thanks, guys. We're just thrilled to have being able to come up here, and, and we we love doing this. This Tube thing is is all about celebrating Canadian music, celebrating Canada. So yeah, you know, it's like I said, one day it's, Tuke's not a thing, and then the next thing you know, it's you know, it's it's a thing. Yeah, and we're playing the, all. This things. band right here is the reason we got into music in the first place. It's about having fun. It's, we just have a laugh. You can tell. I mean, we're just up here having a laugh all the time, and that's important thing about music. Don't ever forget that. Yeah, absolutely. That's well said. Yeah. Thank you for joining us today. Thank right. you. High five, Massey right. Twins. Bob. Good job. Good job. Wow. You know, yeah. I'm really impressed with your interviewing skills and your hosting skills. That's really impressive. Yeah. I actually learned some things today. I hope you enjoyed this episode, and well, like, subscribe, buy our merch, follow us on. Social media? Definitely never enough toque from B Sharp in Regina, Saskatchewan is coming up. Thank you, toque. Thank you.